Blog Talk Radio. And looking at beautiful stories of his helm tolerance and his truthfulness and his trustworthiness and these beautiful stories, it's beyond this. He is the tissues of our lives. He is our intercessor on the day of judgment. He is our door. Through him we can access Al-Jannah and without him we can never access Al-Jannah. This is why in the past 70, 80 years since the establishment of the Saudi royal family and the Saudi dynasty in Saudi Arabia, so-called Saudi Arabia, I have never seen any country hijacked by one family. I haven't seen any wealth concentrating in one family. If divided, it could suffice for the whole Muslim Ummah. It could make every Muslim rich. And no one has done destruction to Islam through undermining the role of the Prophet as much as the Saudi royal family has done. It's enough. It is the beginning. It should be time. And it is high time that they should go and withdraw in their deserts and leave Mecca and Medina to Muslims, to true Muslims, to Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, to the followers of the four madhabs. It's enough, we go and perform Hajj and Umrah there and all we hear, we're mushriks. Because we're visiting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Ummah are mushrikeen, associating other gods with Allah. What's that? Millions of Muslims, billions of Muslims around the world are kuffar. Because of their love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are mushriks. Because of their attachment to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they don't worship him. They don't hold him in an esteem higher than a human being, but the best of human beings. He says, I am the master of the children of Adam. It's enough. So brothers and sisters, loving Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knows no limits. If you are short of good works, love Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah will guide you to him. And this is what he brought to us in one beautiful hadith, in one beautiful news, Bishara from him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A Bedouin comes in, very new to Islam, knows nothing, hasn't done much. He knows the obligations of the deen, to pray, to fast, to pay charity, to perform hajj, the basic principles and elements of Islam. And he's now concerned about the hour. The hadith is agreed upon in Al-Bukhari and Muslim Sahih. On the authority of Anas, may Allah be pleased with him, the servant of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that should be our bishara, the good news we should receive tonight, inshallah, for every one of us. Because whatever happens, we need to accelerate our work. We need to improve the level of our love. We need to enhance our understanding of the rank of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. But... If we do not do him enough justice, as Allah is the only one who knows his real rank and can reward him on our behalf, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, what we have is what this man had received from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam upon his arrival and describing his case. Now he's asking about the hour. O oh, Messenger of Allah, Mata Sa'a, when is the hour coming? The concern of many of us, our concern should be building our future. Our concern should be struggling for the best level of life or standard of living for our children. Giving them the best education, the best iman, the best adab, giving them uh, Quran, giving them sunnah. Our struggle should be for tomorrow and after tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen after a few hundred years. The man was concerned about the hour. The Prophet ﷺ did not want to upset him. So instead of uh, telling him, why are you asking this question? What's the benefit in this question? He asked him another question. What have you prepared for the hour? One very successful technique of answering questions if you want to run up. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We're about to start the class, inshallah. And uh, we thank everybody for calling in. Uh, Ustad has just uh, called in, so alhamdulillah, we're going to go to him now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh are we ready oh yes bismillah ar rahim wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammad ashraf ashraf al mursalin wa khatim al nabiyin wa imam al muttaqin hatta yawm al din اللهم باركنا بعلم ينفع بي ربنا زدنا علما نافعا وباركنا بالمقاصد العلم وفوائد العلم وعمل صالح على علم رحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين <clears throat> so, um, we're continuing now with the uh, the, the Risala of Ibn Abi Zay um, page 127. If you have the uh, the Arabic text of, well, well, that was really, cause this is a particular shah. Yeah, so we're on the bab, bab the Imam, wa hikma Imam, wa ma'mum the chapter dealing with the Imam and the followers, the functions of the Imam, the office of the Imam. And so the Mu'allif, he continues, he says, وَيَوَامُ النَّاسُ أَفْدَالُهُمْ وَأَفْقَهُمْ وَلَا تَغُمُّمْ الْمَرْعَى فِي فَرِيدَةٍ وَلَا نَافِلَةٍ لَا رِجَالٍ وَلَا نِسَائٍ يقرأ مع إمام فيما يسر فيه ولا يقرأ معه فيما يجهر فيه ومن أدراك قتا فأكثر فقد أدراك الجمعة فيضقد بعد السلام إمام فآت فآته على نهو ما فعل إمام في قرر وعما في قيام جلوسي ففعلي كفعلي ألبان مصلى وحده ومن صلي وحده فله أن يعيد في جمعة بفضل وفي ذلك إلى مغرى وحده وحدها ومن أدراك ركة فأكثر من صلاة الجمعة فلا يعيدها في جمعة ولم يدريك إلى تشهرة أو سجورا فله أن يعيد في جمعة جمعة, جمعة رجل وحده مع إما يقوم عن يمينه ويقوم رجالا فأكثر خرفه فإن كانت أمرة معهما أقامت خلف خلفهما وإن كان معهما رجلا رجلا صلني على, على اليمين إمام المرأة خلفهما ومن صلي بزوجته وقامت خلفها صبي صبي إن صلي مع رجالا وحدة خلف إمام فقام خلفه إن كان صبيا يأكل ولا يذهب ولا يدعو من يقيف معه وإمام تراتب إن صلي وحدة قام مقام الجمعة ويقرأ في كل مشر له إمام راتب إن تج تجمع فيه صلاة مرتين ومن صلي صلاة فلا يوام فيها أحدا وإذا We'll start there. So, no, I'll just continue. We, uh, there's a lot of explanation here. We either saha imam wa sajra li sahwi fi attabu'hu min wa lam yasruhu ma'ahu min mana khalfuhu wa la yarfa'hu ahadun ra'asan qabla al-imam wa la yaf'alu illa ba'daha fi'aliyya wa yaftahi ba'da wa yuqumu ithnatayna ba'da qiyamihi wa yusallam ba'da salamu ma siwa ذلك ما ما سوى ذلك فواسع أن يفعله معه وبعدها أحسن وكل سهو يسهل المأموم فإن إمام يحمله عنا إلى رقة أو ساجدا أو تكبرة إحرام أو سلام وعد واعتقاد نية فريدة وإذا سلم إمام فلا يثبثه بعد سلام وينصر وينصر وينصرف إلا أن يكون في محلة فذلك واسع so the Imam here, he he's talking about the the function of the Imam, who can be the Imam, and uh, 
so in the English translation, he says that the best of the people should be the imam on the office of the imam, that the, the person leading uh, the prayer and the judgments uh, should be the best, the best of the people. Uh, what's meant here, and, and this is um, this is very important. Oftentimes, you know, we see people in the masjid basically appointing themselves to be imams. This is not correct for many reasons. One, the, what the imam, what, what Ibn Abi Zaid here when he's talking about that that. Of the other, uh, that the best of them should be the imam. He's, he's, he's talking about a knowledge. He's talking about in piety. And the reason is because there's a sound hadith on the authority of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that, uh, the, the English translation is that one of the prayers which will not be accepted is the is the is the imam who's not liked. So this harkens to the conception of consensus. So the people must agree, or they should agree to be the imam. Now this is not to say that, for example, like, you know, like uh, in the past, you know, when imams were appointed, the people didn't like them, that prayer behind such a person would not be valid. That's not what we're saying. But, but it's better that the imam to be chosen, and, 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 he, and the imam should be chosen based upon you know uh, the uh, the knowledge which one has knowledge here meaning uh, knowledge of the Quran knowledge of the prerequisites of the salat you know how how to perform this uh, you know what what invalidates the salat what are the arkan of salat what are the, what are the sunnah of the salat things like this All right this is uh what's meant by uh, being knowledgeable or the best amongst them. Uh, some of the fuqaha have adduced, uh, you know, in the past, like, for example, one must know Surah Baqarah, this, that, this, that. But these are in times when, uh, and, and in lands where, you know, Arabic was um, uh, was more proliferate, so to speak. But in, in our case, I think, uh, um, the, the most certainly the most knowledgeable in, in regards to the Quran. And, not, and when we hear, and another thing what we mean here by being knowledgeable is not just... <clears throat> you know, memorizing surahs, but the ability to recite the Qur'an with good tajweed and with tartiyah, right? Um, there's some fuqaha, you know, for example, they say, uh, if a person in, in Salat al-Fatiha says, what a Salat al alam ta'alayhim, this is the same, right? They say that this invalidates both salat. So some of the fuqaha say this because they say that, that the Fatiha is the Umm al-Qur'an, <clears throat> it's the mother of the Qur'an, and in no prayer is acceptable, meaning, meaning prayer, meaning salat, is acceptable without it. So if, it, and so by saying like lazina, you know, common mistakes pe people make, this corrupts the meaning, and so therefore if the, if the meaning is corrupt, then, then the, the entire salat is corrupt. This is, you know, it's not a light matter. Um, another mistake people come and make when they, Recite, for example, Surah Fatiha. What they say? What well, a bawdy! <clears throat> this is incorrect according to the rules of Tashweet. According to the rules of Tashweet, the Lord and the Alif. It, 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 you, you're supposed to hold it for six. Well, the med here. Well, bawdy, right? If you say, well, bawdy. No. According to some Fukahado, this 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 would invalidate the this would invalidate the Surah. <clears throat> the Imam says. He says women cannot be, uh, uh, well, in, in the, in the uh, translation, uh, in the, in the, in the shah I have here, he has a footnote. He says, he says women cannot be imams. He said women cannot lead the prayer. Uh, this, this, this be true whether it is a fard or a nafila or whether it is a group or whether the group in question is men or women. Now this is now this is particular to the Maliki school, in the Hanafi and the Shafi and the Shafi school, the women can lead other women in prayer. Um, but according to the in the Maliki school, women cannot <clears throat> lead other women in prayer. Uh, this is in 
agreement with the Amma of the people of Medina. And recently, a couple of years ago, I remember uh, this lady in New York, was, I think her name was Amin Wadu, she had a uh, mixed gender, um, Salat al Juma, Arudu Billah. And, and, for, and for her evidence is to say she can do this, she relied upon a hadith. I think it's found in Abu Dawood, uh, where uh, a Sahabiya, I think her name was Umm al Khair, or Umm Hadid, where the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reportedly told, her, reportedly or allegedly, uh, gave her permission to lead uh, the prayer in her home. And so <clears throat> she said, based on based upon this hadith. Uh, you know, women, women can be imams. But the problem with this is, first of all, and, and, then, and then she also used the, the, the hukum from the uh, uh, the, the now defunct Tabari school and the, the fiqh of Imam Tabari. It was reported that he allowed women to be imams. But we can't rely upon such um, frivolous, uh, you know, uh, hadith and 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 and, 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 and medieval hukums because for one there's a for one the school of Imam Tabari is extinct we don't for whatever reason we don't uh, the school has, has has not come to us in a continuous unbroken chain so we can't rely upon the supposed or alleged hukums in such a school two if we look at the evidences or the evidence uh, which she cited this one uh, singular, singular hadith. There's a famous, known uh, maxim when it comes to usul al fiqh, which any student who has studied usul al fiqh knows. Is yaqin la yuzillu bi shak. Right. This is one of the, what they call the khuliyat al kams, the five uh, universal principles of fiqh. This is the sec- uh, This is the, this is the second one. The, the first one is umur bi maqasidha, or the um, Affairs are judged according to the actions, and the second one is the second one is yaqin la yuzul bishak. That certainty is not uh, raised or or abandoned due to doubt. And so you have this one report, which all, which all, which by the way is considered weak, according to uh, the scholars the scholars of, of uh, hadith. And so you can't take this one weak report exclude the tawaj or the overwhelming uh, views or reports reported by many that women can not in fact be imams. So the, the, the dispensation, which, which the Hanafis and the Shafis rule, the Hanafis and, uh, uh, use when they say that women can be imams for other women, it's, just, it's, just, it's, it's, a, it's a dispensation. It's not a, you know... Um, when, when there's a man there, then then the imam is then, then the man is to be the imam. So even the other opinions is a dispensation, but in the Malik school, even it's, that's not even considered a dispensation, because it goes it, it went against one the amal of the people of Medina, and two uh, uh, in the report of the Prophet said that, that the that the men are the imams. All right. So this is important, you know, when we're studying fiqh that um that we keep all of these nuances in mind and don't, you know, be so uh, quick to abandon uh, traditional uh, scholarship. There's there's deep reasons and, and wisdoms, you know, uh, and, these, uh, and, and the reason why these opinions have come to us in such an unbroken chain. And so in the, in the, in the Shah, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Hammi Ajfari, he says that women cannot be imams. But and then he also said that hermaphrodites they can't lead the prayer either. All right. Again, look how detailed the fuqaha of the past were. He said hermaphrodites, you know, hermaphrodites they they can also they they, they also cannot be imams in the Malachi school. I said that if a person makes a lot behind them, then then um. Well, he says, well, he says the prayer was, that that, the, that that prayer behind him must be repeated, right? And then uh, he mentions uh, 
ابو ابو ابراہیم خالف خالف ابو ابراہیم الاندلسی قال اوکے ہی سیز با امام ابو ابراہیم الاندلسی ڈسگری ان ہی سیز اینی ومن و حمافدائی لائک ہر who resembles a woman who leads a prayer must repeat it within the time. He says, know that the actual, uh, know that the actual being a male is, is a precondition for the validity of being, of being an imam. And then he also, he makes another statement here. Uh, that non-Muslims cannot be imams, this, this of course is doesn't need explanation. One of the prerequisites for that, one of the prerequisites for salat is, is Islam. Uh, the, uh, the imams they must be aqal or abalag. They, they must uh, they must be adults. Right? Uh, by adults here, um, for men it means they uh, should have had like a or a wet dream or facial hair, some signs of adulthood. Uh, uh, they must be sane. Right, if a person prays behind someone who is not sane, then that prayer is not valid. Uh, that the imam, he must be um, just or he must be upright. Right? Uh, he, uh, he must have, uh, he must have, adab, he must have a uh, good character. He said, uh, he said, by good character, this meant a lack of impiety connected to the prayer. All right. Uh, again, this is not to say that if a person prays behind someone who's not pious, that the prayer is invalid. But he's uh, talking about, you know, like, like, like what's preferred. All right. Yeah. So, like, for example, if, if a person does, in fact, pray behind, like, a fornicator or something, then that per it, it's... it's um, it's a uh, dislike that would be considered makro, but the prayer would still be valid. But um, according to some of the other Maliki Fukaha, the, the prayer behind such a person would be invalid, but that's only like if, the, if it's known that about the person. So what, what's meant here is that, you know, if, if a person does some sinful act, you know, uh, and, and the uh, privacy of his or her, you know, or, or of his home or things like this, then this is not known to the general people. But the but what's meant here by the condition that uh, a prayer prayer behind such a person will be invalid is if, if if this person does these things openly, and the people know this. This is, this is a, a varying opinion, though. Um. He says that um, that that one of the other conditions is that it must be that the imam must do the prayer in in tarqib, like in 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 its time, like for okay, and and this is another um, in in the Maliki school. For example, if the imam is praying for, her, right. And you, you know, say say for example, the man, is, the imam is praying asr, and you're praying, and and, and you haven't prayed for, and you come behind the imam, or or you join in the ranks, and then you make your intention for uh, vuh. Accor uh, uh, according to the school of Malik, this will not be acceptable because the the imam is to be followed and everything. That's not to say so. Was well at least for the imam. The imam must be doing the prayer in its proper time. As for example, the muhalat or the the ma'mun, the people praying behind. If such a person was to do such a thing, they would have to repeat uh, the vuhr and then repeat the asr again. Right. So it must be in tartib. It must be in order. He said, and it must. Um, agree with the preconditions, with the rules of the school, right? Uh, meaning, so if you, here's me like any school, like if you follow whatever school, whatever uh, school the imam follows, then the pray, he must do the prayer according to that school, and it's valid, even if you're from a different school.
Right. Um, the imamment also of uh, the slave is not acceptable. Right. On Juma, he says he says in the Juma must be the, the Juma must be uh, must be repeated. Um, he says, Khosa Imam, he said, in reading behind the Imam, the people praying behind the Imam should recite to themselves when he recites to himself. So this is, a, um, for example, in, in the silent prayers, the Imam, the silent, he recited to himself, and the people behind him should recite to themselves. Uh, when the Imam recites out loud, then the people, they recite out loud. Right. I mean, when the, when the imam recites out loud, then the people are uh, are silent. I'm sorry. Um. So then he says that when it comes to making up aspects of the prayer, the other aspects of the prayer should just standing and sitting and done, as if you're continuing praying. You should start by yourself. So, uh, if you come late. After the imam, of course, salams out, then you stand and repeat the prayer uh, by yourself, not in a group, right? Um, and what's meant by coming late, of course, is if you are in ruku and you didn't, and if you're able to catch one breath while the imam was still in ruku, then you, one does not have to make up that uh that prayer but if one has not like it took in a breath while the imam was in ruku then that raka would be declared to be missed and they and the in the matmoon or the uh, person behind them would have to stand would have to uh repeat that prayer i mean repeat that uh that raka because that person would have missed it would have missed it. Um, he says, when the Imam recites the Fatiha and the Sur, he recites as the Imam recited. He did silently, he did silently, as he did it aloud. He, he, he doesn't just allow if he sits in a place he is permitted to sit. Even if he is alone by catching two rakats, he stands for the Takbir. If he sits in a place where it's not permitted to sit, even if, if alone by catching one or three rakats with him, he stands without a Takbir. It is the famous position of the post Ibn uh, Majeshim. And as I see his thoughts, the Takbir is not moving the pillar of the prayer. The, tek, the author of the Tiras mentioned from Malik and the Utubiyah. The Utubiyah is another um, variant of uh, uh, of the Madovana. Uh, the position is if he sits in the second, he stands without a Takbir. He said this is based on the fact that he is making up two previous ones, in it, which is which begins with the first Takbir of the Ihram. Um, he, he then says that if you are repeating the prayer, if you have already done the prayer by yourself, then you can do it again with the group in order to get the benefit from it. All right, so uh, uh, what's meant here is if a person has already prayed you know, an obligatory salat alone, uh, he mentions it outside of the three mosques. But here, uh, we can basically say outside of, outside of the mosque. There is no re uh, When there is no regular imam and the imam was not given while you were in the mosque, it is recommended that you repeat the prayer in the group. Even in the dorori time, remember earlier we talked about the iqtiyari in, in the dorori time. The repeating is for the sake of the, the dorori time, of course, is the last part of the time before that particular time uh, expires. He says the repeating is for the sake of the excellence of the group, which is limited to not being outside the time of group prayer. If it is outside the time of the prayer, it is not repeated. The group um, was meant by a group as two or more people. Um, he said, and there is no repeating until there is regular amen. Okay, now here, here, here's, here's another part. If there is, in the message, one was to come late and there's an imam, a full-time imam there in the masjid. Then, and, and that group had already prayed, 
then there's you don't make another jamaat, even if you're with other people. So this is this is this is the only condition here. Right? But outside of that you can. Or if you came to the message or if you already prayed for them Lord and alone and then you were to go to the message and you were to find the Imam there with the Jamaat praying Lord, then you can join in the Lord and pray it again. And the other you know, and to, to and this would be counted, you know, as a nafila. Or even in the case of Asa. I said, but not in the case where uh if you were to come say for example you were to come late with two with two or more people and the Imam of the masjid had already prayed the Jama'ah with the Jama'ah, then you don't make another Jama'ah. Then you would um, just pray, um, pray alone. Right? He says, he says, he's illa illa he said, he said, he said, there's another um, point here in regards to the mother. He said, if he were to repeat it with the imam, meaning the ma'mun, if, if, if the ma'mun is to repeat the, the monger with the imam, he bows an even number, and he does it as a nafila. If he does not remember until he has prayed three with him, when the imam says the salam, he does a fourth, and after it, as a nafila. Right? And so, the, the wisdom behind this is that if you already did the monger, the monger, Prayer is the witr for the day, and that right. So it, it makes everything you prayed uh, odd. So if you're going, so if you come across it, so if you already prayed the maghrib, then you know you join in the jama'ah, and they're praying maghrib. Then you have to stand again. You have to stand and, and make it four, because you already did your witr for the day. So uh, again, so just like in the case of for if it was before asa, those would be. Uh, the, the the second ones, the subsequent ones, which you did with the Jama'at will be considered nafila. And in this case too, the Mughra will be considered nafila, so you have to um, make it uh, uh, an even number because your first Mughra had already made it an odd number. All right. Um, we want to stop. We've been going for like 30 minutes for and ask if there's uh, anyone who has any questions at this point before we continue. Sidi Hanif. There's Aligo. No, I, I want to ask if anyone uh, have any questions because that was uh, sort of a little bit. Right. Um, as you said, if anyone has any questions, uh, push number one. Uh, that way, I see your hand raised. Uh, we'll, go, we'll go to you if you have anything about what we covered so far. We're dealing with, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, we're dealing with the uh, book. He's teaching from the Risala, the Ibn Abi Zayd al uh, For anyone who may not have a copy, uh, our, you can find it online actually, uh, the, whole, the whole English translation of it on uh, Aisha Buley's webpage. It's uh, A I S H A, uh, Buley, B E W L E Y. If you just Google that name, you know, you'll go right to the home page, and then when you scroll down, you'll see she has a copy of the text. Um, and this is chapter, this is the chapter dealing with the, uh, the rights of the, um, of the imam, or the, obviously, the, they're not the rights of the imam, the um, <clears throat> conditions for the imam, or the qualifications of the imam, and the uh, followers. Um, well, anyway, okay, we have uh, one uh, question here. All right, so on line one. Salaam alaikum. Wa Okay, my questions, well, I have a few questions, but you want to stick to exactly what you covered. Still pertaining to Salaam, or can I just ask my few questions, or should I just ask them? Yes, Okay. Uh, the first one is, uh, well, it is pertaining to, the, to the, what you covered about the woman leading other women. Um, Follow Maliki Fik, inshallah. Uh, if I understand that if there's a group of sisters that need to make the same salat, there's no bride present, that we have to each make it individually because the sister can't lead the sisters, or is it just that she stays and the rank doesn't step ahead, or something like that, or flat out can't lead, period? No, she can't lead. In the Maliki school, no, she can't lead. 
Okay. Uh, and and, and, and the, the Hanafis, they, they, they give a dispensation where she can leave, but she just doesn't, like, step out in front of them. Like, she remains in, 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 the, in the line with the other sisters, and she leads like that. And she doesn't, you know, step out. But, you know, in the Malachi school, you know, women can't lead other women, period. Okay. Uh, so say if I'm amongst women that aren't hand, uh, Maliki, mm-hmm. they're either no school or just, I don't know, should I, uh, do I let them leave me or just know that, um, no, oh, well, that doesn't make sense. They just can't leave me, so I just have oh, to say, uh, I can't get you guys. I got to do what I got to do, just step aside and just pray, basically. You can, do, you can do, you can do, I mean, you, you, you want to use uh, wisdom. You want to use hikma. In such a case, you know, one might want might want to take a, a ruksa, you know, um, from maybe one of the other schools, as long as uh, the, the sister leading is going to still meet the qualifications. Like, you know, she knows, you know... Um, her, uh, the rights and the prerequisites and everything. Allah Allah, so, you know, you know, one has to use hikmah. If, if the sisters you are with understand, you know, the conditions placed upon you and your mother have, you know, and they're not offended and things like this, I would say then, you know, just politely, you know, explain to them why, you know, you, uh, uh, there's there's this prohibition in your particular school. You, know, you, you pray by yourself. If it's going to lead to something greater, though, then I would say just take just take a ruksa and you know and perform okay. the prayer and perform the prayer. But 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 then to even if you do that, remember that you must perform the prayer then according to all the conditions of that school. Mm-hmm. All right, so okay, if you're going to take that kind of. Rooks or whatever, then you know the, the wudu has to be valid according to the Hanafi school and everything. Okay. Um, and, like, make some. Okay. So would it be would it be uh, worse for the person in that situation where she thinks it might offend others to um, take a ruksa and go ahead and let people lead her, or would it be would it be worse to go ahead and take it upon herself to lead because she knows that. She would do it correctly, even though she knows she shouldn't be right. Right. I, 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 I will say. I mean, if she, if she doesn't know, you know, like if, if the sisters that have, you know, uh, know the prerequisites is false or not and everything, actually, it, it would be incumbent upon her to lead according to another school. Right. They were, okay. But uh, no, nah, said, but 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 if you know, there's someone there who knows according to other school, that would be no problem. Okay. Uh, another no question about we. Okay. Another question about who we too. Um, I have children of different ages, and I know that uh, dealing with other children, like a, in a Muslim environment, like it's a Muslim school, you have you want the children to learn to pray. So you have like a, a boy who's not mukallaf yet, just a boy, lead the children. Um, that's fine, right? But say yeah. amongst the ranks, there might be a girl amongst the sisters' ranks. Who is Mukulla? Who is mature? Mm-hmm. Can he even lead her? Because technically, she's now an adult and can't be led by somebody no, no, who isn't no, no, even. No, 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 she, no, he, 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 no, it can't because it's not even. If if he's not Mukulla, I mean, the slot even isn't even like obligatory upon him, so he can't lead a girl. If if, if she, you know, if the slot is obligatory upon her. Right. Okay. But if it is, she has to go ahead and pray uh, alone because now she's an adult. No, an adult. No. Otherwise, he can lead other children who are not mature, right? Because yeah, it's just yeah. a good thing. Right. Okay. Right, I understand. I do have another question. You know, when you're making um, when you're making select and you come you come in late, and um, there's a point where you have to uh, there's a point where you get toward the end, and you know that uh, your last rakat is technically, and I'm never clear on this. You're, you're in your last record. They've already slammed out. Now you're going to go ahead and continue on to do your fourth because they're done. Do you do this as if it's your first? Say it's Michael Rishad. Do you make it out loud as if it's your first? 
or do you make it silently because it's technically your last? I mean, you know, you might be making up the first, but it is technically it's, your fourth it, 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 It's your, if, it, you, 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 you do it as if, if it's your first, then it's your first. So, so, so you're yep. saying like, if it's after the real cool or whatever, and uh, so, so you're gonna have to stand back up when the Imam salams out. Then you pray at the Fisher first. So you, so I mean, so you would, you know, recite aloud. But of course, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to do it to where you would disturb others. You would recite to where, you know, you could hear yourself. You know, okay, that makes sense. Make it to be first. So also in that same type of salat where you came in late. When you're in your um, when they're in the fourth, which is technically your third, if you miss the first one, so you just miss one more cut. Do you do the whole teshuvah and the test to slam the the prophet, or do you know that you're going to do it again in your fourth, or do you just sit there and well, just hold on. Um, what, 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 what salat? Explain to me. You went a little bit too fast. Say say it's um, any salat you miss the first, and now you're going to go ahead and um, they're in their fourth, but it's technically your third. So you're you're sitting because they're sitting. And they're about to finish, but you're you're only in your third cut. Do you do the you know the tashuhud and the slams upon the prophet the same way, and knowing that you're going to do it again in, in your fourth, or do you just sit there silently and let them go ahead and do it, but you're not going to follow in that, and you save it for your fourth? You do, like you might you, be in jail. You you something. would do you would do the fourth. You you would you would save the fourth as if it's your fourth. I say so. So like, when, when, so when you do, when, so like, say for example, uh, say for example, it's a uh, Zohar, right? And you're right. in your third, there and your fourth. That's your question, right? Right. You're in your third, there and right. your fourth. Okay. So yeah, you 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 would you know of course follow follow the Jamaat, but but you would uh save your the last, you know, part where you make the prolonged du'a and everything and the Ibrahimiyah uh, to the fourth. Okay. Okay. All right, Shukran. That's all my questions for you. Can I like them? Thank you, sir. questions. Uh, like I said, just push number one about anything dealing with the, uh, the prayer, regardless of what we've covered thus far. Or even if you have uh, been tuning in within the last few weeks, and if you have any questions uh, that you may have um, seen from last week or any previous classes, I'm sure um, uh, the, the, wouldn't, uh, the teacher wouldn't mind uh, answering any of that as well. Okay, appears we have it. Uh, no more questions, so you know, you, you, know, you have it. Okay, we'll finish up this part right here. Okay. So he, <clears throat> the Imam he makes the uh, so uh, he, he explains it, except in the case of again the Maghrib that um that, that in case one uh, the one would add another rakat if he's repeating it. <clears throat> to make sure that it's uh, an even number as opposed to an odd number. Which is about, you know. So then he so then he he, 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 he goes on and he talk about another scenario where a person prays where a person has prayed one rakat or more with a group. He said then the person should not pray should do that prayer again with another group. Right. So he says uh, that it is uh, hara, uh, that it is it is it is uh, prohibited, even if the second group is greater in number. Right. Um, this is he said this is this is the this this the this is the, the Rajhi, This is the well known opinion because the excellence for which repeating the obligatory prayer has been obtained, even if the prayer begins. Uh, and, 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 the, and the other group was larger. All right. He says, uh, Ibn Habib said that the excellence for the little jama. He said that the excellence of the of the group is to have uh, numbers, an 
excellence of the imam is based on what is stated by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, when he says the prayer of a man with another man is better than his prayer alone. Well, no, not hadith we know. And his prayer with two men is better than his prayer with one man. And what is more, his beloved to Allah, he said, so this would mean that whoever prays with the group should repeat it with the better group, or the one who prayed with the imam should repeat it with the better the better imam, this is not what is meant, and it is not the the, the meaning of this hadith. This uh, he says that this particular hadith this is a general hadith which indicates the encouragement to pray in the group in a large group. Now, in 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 the case of you know you call one or caught with one group, then you're going to go to another. He said it's, it's not this hadith is not uh, meant for uh, in this context. Um, he said, if you have already caught the suju or the tashah, then you can, if you want, do that prayer again with another group. Um, so, because in this case, that person would not have been done to pray. Because they, that person would have missed the entirety of the salat. <clears throat> I mean, I mean, of that arkat. So then the imam, he goes on and he talks about the positions behind the imam. He said that there are six, that there are six positions um, in regards to the ma'moon, in regards to the people following the imam, whether he is alone or other men or women or with him. He says the first is rajalan. Rajalan is, 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 is in the case of two men. He said, if there's just one man standing with the imam, then he stands on the imam right. He says, if there is one man or a child who is aqal, who, is, who understands the prayer, uh, he says that um, then the desire, it is mustahab for this person, desirable for that person to stand with the imam to his right and a little bit behind him so that the imam can distinguish can be distinguished from the follower it is disliked to be level the fact that his place to the right is based on the sahih hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma when he said uh, the, the meaning is uh, he said I was with I was with uh, I was in the house of my aunt, Maimuna, and the message of Allah so also, he stood to pray, and I stood to his left, and he moved me with his right hand behind, and, uh, his back to the right side. In other narrations, he said he grabbed him by his braid, and he brought him uh, on the other side. The other case, so in regards to the feet, um, the Fukaha said, like, if the person is standing on the right, then like their toes maybe should be like at the like the uh, the person on the right should their toes should be not on the same level with the imam, but a little a little behind. Some say maybe to the heel to the heel level. The second position which he talks about is um, two two men, two or more men. He said if it's two or more men, then they stand behind the imam. Uh, in my explanation here, he says, uh, and he just recites the, uh, or he recounts the hadith, which is a Sahih Muslim on Jabir. Says the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the prayer went to stand at the left of the Masjid of Allah. He took my hand and brought me around to stand in his right. And Jabir ibn Sakhr came and stood on the left of the Masjid of Allah. So he took our hands and pushed us until he, until, until we were behind him. The other condition is the women. He said if there's a woman, she should stand behind the men. All right, so there's the imam, there's the two men, or however many men, he said, and then there's the woman. Uh, this is based upon the tradition of the prophet. For often we said it's the best role, so the men are in the front, the best, so the women are behind. Um, and there's also uh, the narration of Sahih Muslim where Anas said that when he prayed, 
um, with the Messenger of Allah, I don't that Um Salaam will pray behind them. Another condition which the Imam narrates here is that uh, a man and a woman following the Imam. He said if there is just one man and a woman praying behind the Imam, then the man stands and on the Imam's right, and the woman stands behind the both of them. All right. Uh, in the case of a man and a woman, if it's a man who was and his wife, then she stands behind him. If it's the case of a of a of a fubi, a man and a boy, then the fubi, the young boy. But the man stands side by side behind the imam. Uh, if it's the imam single prayer, um, it says the imam's prayer is a group prayer. The prayer of the regular imam when he is alone is considered a group prayer. This is, for example, in the masjid. If no one comes to the masjid, but the imam is there, and the uh, and no, and no one comes for the Jamai. As long as the Imam prays uh, the prayer in the time in the Masjid, then his prayer alone is still considered Jamai. So all of the conditions which we previously mentioned in regards to coming late and everything would still would still count as long as the Imam was there and he prayed the. Uh, uh, the the salah on time, even no one else was there with him. He said that that there that, that there um, you can't pray two prayers in the mosque, meaning um, you know again as we stated earlier that you know you can't have to, it is it, it's makru, you know for there to be two group prayers for any one prayer in the message if it has a regular email. Uh, of course, like you know, most of the massage here in America, though they 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 don't have a problem with actually encourage people to pray as many jama you know, much as possible. But you know, according to our school, uh, this would be this would be disliked. And one of the reasons is because it's actually a disrespect to to the imam that the imam and the the uh, the times have been set and established, and people don't get there in time. So, so one of the one of, one of my teachers told me one of the wisdoms in the, in this prohibition is to actually encourage the people to come to the prayer on time, as opposed to you know uh, if I know I could just go in the mission in the old time and pray you know whenever I get there and find someone there. You know, this this is not this is not this is disrespectful to the imam and disrespectful to the uh, to the Jama'at or, or the community at large. And so it's, it's encouraged for the people to pray at one time, uh, as far as Jama'at, behind the Imam, and then disperse us to come in, you know, come in forming all these different Jama'ats and everything and disturbing, you know, other people who uh, uh, who may be in other acts of ibadah. He said if someone um, has already prayed, then that person cannot be the Imam. All right, so one that's already prayed, they cannot be the email. Um, the most men by be the imam here is be the imam for that same prayer. He said, in regards to following the imam, he just uh, he, he he makes it a note here. In, in regards to following the imam and sahu. Or, or the the prostration of forgetfulness. He said, if the imam leaves out something in his prayer, and he does the the sujood the the, uh, the the sajda of forgetfulness, those behind him follow him, even though they themselves have not left anything out. All right. And then a, a note here, a side note here, says that it uh, it is actually incumbent to follow him, even if he did it before. Even if he he did it before him, um, and subsequent and, and and also too, you know, if a person made a mistake, then their mistakes are upon the imam. 
I said, but so, but at the same time, I mean, there's a there's a great benefit. So even if they did, and in this case, even if they didn't make the mistake, you know, the imam did it. The imam's mistake is not upon them; it's upon, meaning the ma'mun or the followers. It's upon the imam. All right. Um, there's another caveat here. He says that um, that if a person did not do a rakat with him. He does not subs he does not uh subsequently uh prostrate afterwards. This is in regards to if something meaning the prostration afterwards is in regards to if something if the, if the imam um forgot something, right? Because there's the qabli in the body. The qabli is if a sunan was forgotten, like for example in the case of the tishahud. And then the person, and then the imam remembers, and then he would make the two, uh, he would make the, the prostration for uh, before the testing as opposed to after it. But if something was just integral, which was forgotten, or like the number of rakat, then this, then this would be this is called a body. Then the imam will will, will actually wait till he did the uh, teslim, and then do the prostration of forgetfulness, and then do. Uh, the other uh, salam upon the Prophet and one more taslim to the right. He just mentions here that Ibn Qasim uh, disagreed if the person didn't do that rakat and says he does not uh, follow that person. He does not. He, he does not have to follow the, the Imam in that case. Um, now. So then he also says um, the one should not uh, go before the imam. One should not raise their head before the imam, nor do they do any of the actions before the imam has done it. Um, and there's many, many uh, hadith actually in regards to this. The Prophet also said that the person who goes before the imam, he'll be raised on the day of judgment with the head of a donkey. And so it's very important to follow the imam. The imam is to be followed and not preceded uh, in, in the prayer. He says, um, when beginning the prayer, you begin the prayer after he has done it. And this is, You see this a lot of people, you know, making their at the same time as the Imam. He says he raised up. Allah Akbar, they like do it in unison. No. You begin the prayer after the Imam begins the prayer, not before. All right. Um, so then he says in regards to standing, uh, stand up after two barakats after he has stood up. Right. Um, in regards to the tasfeen, says the salam after after he has said the salam. Um, so after the imam says the first the first tasfeen to the right, then the salat itself is officially over, and then you follow him and say the uh, the tasfeen to the right. You don't have to wait till he does the tasfeen to the left because in the Malik school that's that's a uh, no offers anyway. That's uh, extra, and that's you know only only done for fadilla or for the virtue of giving salam to the other angel, but it's not obligatory. Um, he says also that things which are left out by the follower, if if, if anything is left out by the follower. By someone praying behind the imam, the responsibility is for the imam. I right, see so that person doesn't have to. Uh, he says this is like the takbir in the words of Tishah, or he said, or adding a sajda or a cool. Uh, there's no uh, thing or other things done intentionally. Not other things done intentionally, like. Uh, forgetting the uh, the takbir or the tishahud while following the imam, right? This is upon upon if he arrived late and forgets while making up with the 
but he missed with the imam. The imam was not is not responsible. That's if he arrives late. But if he has done everything with it, then the other minor things. This is for the imam alone. Except for the, um, so with that, I think um, we can stop. We've been going for like an hour. Inshallah, if, if, any, if anyone has any uh, questions, then bismillah. Inshallah. Uh, I do start to say that if uh, anyone has any questions, this is the time to ask. Uh, if you're already, if you're calling, just push one. Uh, I'll go to you as uh, find, find out what your question is, so inshallah we can be of assistance. And uh, if anyone is on the computer listening in, if you have any questions, uh, just dial 914-338-084. That's 914-338-084. If you have a question on uh, line two, um, this is the number is 773-544. Uh, hold on, this okay. Seven seven three five four four. You have a question? Thank wow. you, Dr. Hey, how you doing? Uh, good. Hey, uh, uh, in in the Matthew School, the mm -hmm. man when he leading the lot, do he cast names to the left? But what I had a problem with this recently. <laughs> <laughs> Does he? I mean, he can. He, he can. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, cause man, I, I, yeah, I had man, I, boy, I had people talking about. Told me, man, I went to the mufti, and I'm out. I ain't tell you to go to no mufti. I don't. I didn't talk to him. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he, yeah. he can, but 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 it's not it's it's not uh it's not obligatory. The uh the test leading to the right is the only thing which is um. Which is which is obligatory. The one to the left is what they call for villa, or it's just virtuous. Uh, the, yeah. the only the only time the only time you you're talking about the imam, right? Not not the follower. Right, I'm talking about the imam. Oh yeah 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 yeah. As in the case of the imam, only only thing is required is the is the first test lane to the right. Oh, Again, right. this is based uh, upon this is based upon uh, hadith. You know, it's found in. Uh, it's found in Abu Dawood. I think it's found in um uh, uh, Imam Ahmed's Musnad. Uh, uh, all right, just talk about characters, man. Oh, yeah. I I'm I'm I was I've been catching it lately. <laughs> You've been catching it lately? <laughs> yeah, I've been catching it lately. <laughs> you know, just just ask them where they get the stuff from. I ask them, you know, uh Man, the one the one brother told me called the movie. I'm like, you know, I you know what I ran I ran to one of the brothers from uh from one of to bleed your mom and they was at a mass kid. Uh -huh. So I had to leave this a lot and I cast me him out. So I don't you know, ain't nobody said nothing. He catch me a couple of days later and so what the Mufti said, I'm like and the Mufti, I don't Mufti who, I don't even know you. <laughs> And then no. you know, that mufti was probably giving an opinion from a different school. But if he was a real mufti, well, I'm not saying he's not a real mufti. But if he was, uh, hey, yeah, he's not gonna well, he said, uh, yeah, he said he said he it, learned in all four schools. So you know, I wasn't really trying to get after that. No, uh, if he learned in all thing. four schools, then he should know that in the Maliki right. school, the one test yeah. team is sufficient. Yeah, uh, I just like lost. Oh yeah. Okay. Hello. Now, no. if uh, anyone else has any questions, uh, just push to number one, and um, we will go to you. Um, and um, like I said, if you're on the computer, it's 914-338-084. Uh, because we don't have any other questions, so uh, it's on you. 
Uh, um, I was thinking, Michelle, I feel like we've been going for an hour, and I got some, I got some homework I got to get done. <laughs> With your oh, there's no problem. Whatever, whatever the um, <laughs> reason you have, that's what you have for tonight, inshallah. We um, we continue on the next um, section. No, uh, next I, mean, so, I mean, so we completed a section for the next section. The next section is Babel, Jummah, what's Jummah, Office, all that. All right, so um, the yeah. next section, you know, about, you know, uh, um, the, you know, Jummah, you know. So I said we completed one whole. I'm the last, I'm the last. We completed one section. All right, good enough, inshallah. Um, I don't have any questions, so I guess you can close out and um, conclude this week. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa al-asri'ina insana nafi khusri. Illa al-lazina amanu wa aminu salihati wa tawasul bil-haqqi wa tawasul bil-sabr. All right. All right, assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, we concluded another section of the Risal of Ibn Abi Zayn. Uh, this is dealing with the obligation, um, <clears throat> or the qualifications for the imam, and obligations that's upon the follows. And uh, next week, uh, we'll be dealing with the chapter uh, dealing with the, what, what did you say next week was? Hello? Yeah, what did Hello? you say next week's uh, chapter is going to be done with? The Jumar prayer? No. Okay. Yeah, next week we'll be dealing with the Jumu prayer. And like anyone, like I said, who does not have a, a copy of the text, they have a translation on Aisha Bili's Aisha Bili's website, um, as well as there's other ways. I mean, if you go and search, you can find it. Uh, if you want to get an Arabic uh, copy, um, I know you can order no, from. Uh, no, uh, no, I'm sorry. The, 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 the next. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, the, um, the the next the, the next verse is not on Jumu. I was reading it wrong. It's on um Baba Jamma fit that like um miscellaneous uh I'm sorry. Miscellaneous aspects of the prayer. Okay. All right, so as you heard, next week we'll be done with miscellaneous aspects of the prayer. Um and and if, and if you missed any of the uh chapters that we've covered so far, you can check in our uh archives. Um where you see the uh, Risala, the Book of Abizade, or under the title Maliki Fifth Class, and um, you catch up on everything you may have missed. Uh, the first section, or the first class dealt with an introduction on who the author is, which is very important knowledge as well. And um, uh, and uh, and then the second class dealt with the, the creed, and. Um, and from there, we've dealt with uh, the prayer all the way up until the section we did tonight. Um, so, alhamdulillah, it's good information. Thank you all for coming. Uh, and until next week, same time, Sunday at 9. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.